guys, it's Brittany from The Pretty Plus, and this is Brett from The Pretty Plus. He's, oh. not, from, he's not from The Pretty Plus, but this is my husband. Um, if you've ever been on my blog, yeah, and this is Joey, my cat. You guys know Joey 2 Chains. Um, if you've ever been on my blog, you've probably seen him. He's definitely on my Instagram. And when I sent out a general, hey, what should I do for Vlogmas, um, a lot of people said, more Brett. And I was like, I get enough of him. I, I don't know why. <laughs> so I thought that we would do a Q&A, so I sent out on Instagram and Facebook some, like a call for some Q&A questions, and I compiled them all, and we're going to go through them. Um, the first questions are like get to know you and then there's some like parenting ones and then there's like marriage-y type questions. So we'll start with getting to know you. Um, how old are you and what do you do? I am 34. There's really nothing more to go into detail for on that. I'm 34. No. It says what do well, you do? Well I know, do? but there's the first part of it. Oh, okay. Let me go through my progressions. I'm no. cutting okay. a lot out of this video. Yeah, cut. <laughs> Um, I am a quality analyst, which is really boring. I work from home. Yeah. Everybody's always like, oh, that's so great. Oh, I'm not a fan of it. I yeah. used to work retail. I used to be around people a lot. And then the past eight years, I guess only seven or so that I've been working from home, you just kind of feel isolated after a while. Um, the next question is, what's your favorite sneaker of all time? Kind of a boring, normal answer for sneaker people. It is the Jeff Staple collaboration with Nike SB Dunks. It's the original Pigeon. It's like a mostly gray shoe, white Nike check, small little Pigeon decal on the back. So or, would you say uh, that's your Grail sneaker? No, I don't really want to own that, mostly because of the age. I just wouldn't want to wear it. So I would want like a Grail sneaker to be something I would want to actually put on my feet and wear. But my ideal of a my idea of a Grail sneaker has kind of changed a lot because, as she knows, I change my goals and views on sneakers probably daily. And right now I'm in this thing where I don't really want to pay more money than like retail price for a shoe. Yeah. Um, but if I had to pick one for the you know, purpose of the video, um, Virgil Abloh, who is now the creative director at Louis Vuitton, I believe, mm -hmm. he um, is a fashion designer. He did a bunch of collaborations with Nike. His most recent one with the Museum of Contemporary Art in Chicago, which we went and saw the exhibit. Yeah. And he released a blue Nike Air Force One low. And a lot of people just think it's kind of boring because it's a mostly leather shoe. And all of his other shoes have a bunch of different materials and kind of more wackiness to them. But I think it's the most wearable, it's the most simple, it's super high quality. That would probably be, if I were going to spend some dumb amount of money on a shoe, which I yeah. probably won't. How much are they? In my size, I think they're like fifteen or sixteen hundred bucks, yeah. which is a lot. It's down from what it used to be because they were up to two thousand twenty five hundred dollars in my size. This person says big fan of Total Dad Thrift. That's not true. It was Kate. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> What's your favorite thing you ever thrifted? I thought about this a little bit too, and there's kind of a few different categories because favorite is kind of subjective. If you pick like one favorite thing, that doesn't necessarily mean it was the best thing or the best for somebody else. My fit, like the most excited that I've ever been when I found something, she was looking for a shirt by Bum Equipment, which she used to have, I guess you used to have a similar one when you were younger. Yeah. And she had been telling me for a while, you, you need to find a shirt like this. I've always wanted to find one. And it had been five months or so that since I'd been doing this and I'd never found one. I found a few that were not her size. And then we found some that other people had found and were selling, and still, those weren't her size. And then we went on a trip to Cleveland um, to see my family, and found one at Salvation Army, and it was tagged a medium, but when I picked it up, I'm like, this looks like it would fit her, and I showed it to her, and she was super excited about it, so. Yeah. It has little to no actual value. I mean, it's probably like a $10 shirt, mm. but just the fact that I was so excited to find it because I knew that she wanted it. Yeah. Um... My favorite thing in terms of like, one of the things I thought was the most cool and unique, even though it wasn't the most valuable, I found a Charles Manson shirt, which sounds kind of creepy. Terrifying. It's also kind of creepy, but it said, um, 
is it hot in here or am I crazy with a picture of Charles Manson like in a box in the mm -hmm. middle of it and I was doing some research on it I had a friend who really really wanted it but I still wanted to get an idea for what the value was going to be and in doing the research I found out that the shirt was glow in the dark yeah so I had to test this theory I walk into his office and he has it glowing and it's just like Charles Manson, <laughs> Charles Manson's was just face like standing. Glowing. it looked like he was like standing in the office so it was me. super cool but creepy and a little bit terrifying. And then the most valuable thing I've ever found, which I guess counts as my favorite. Head over here. Oh, I threw the cat oh, away. Bye, Joe. Sorry, Joe. Just a Grateful Dead shirt. And usually you associate the Grateful Dead with, you know, tie-dye, bears, skulls. And this one is kind of unique. Um, so the graphic is more tribal, Native American. Just something you really don't see every day. It's from 1990s when the artwork was printed. And another unique thing about it is that I've only seen a few other ones, and on every other one that I've seen, the prints are reversed. So this image that you see on the front here is normally on the back, and then the image you see on the back is normally on the front. So. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Seven. Why is your sister so cool? Sister? I have a couple sisters. A few sisters if you count. Stepsisters. I'm gonna assume it's Kelly. You know, like, yeah. yeah. I would say um, just influence from growing up, growing up around somebody like me. <laughs> just kind of just rubs off, you know? <laughs> I'm just so awesome. That, yeah. That's the best I can do for you. Anyway, what's your favorite thing about being a father? I... Sorry. I love interacting with Clara, just seeing her develop, learn new things, figure new things out. Just anytime she realizes what she's doing and doing it on purpose, and just a little grin she gets on her face when she knows, like, I'm doing this, I did this. She has, like, the best little grin. Yeah. She's so cute. So that's really fun to see. Yeah. What's the hardest thing as a parent? There are so many things that can go wrong with any human life, your own as an adult, but when you're a kid, it's just like, it took a really long time for me to get over the fact, like, like, is she okay? You know, like, she's in her room sleeping right now, like, is she alive? Like, <laughs> I don't know. So you just eventually have to trust that what you're doing is the right thing and that the human body will take care of itself, and if something is wrong, they will tell you in some kind of way. So just yeah. have to put aside all the thoughts, all the process, just live your life and try not to think about all the terrible things that could be happening. I'm like trying not to interject too much, but like That's my fine. hardest thing as a parent has been like... Dealing with me. Oh, I'm sorry. Schedule. Yeah. It's just like we had a schedule, but it was like loose enough that we could like go have fun. Yeah. And, but now it's like... Well, I could stop by a store after work, but then the whole night is just, like, ruined. Like, if I stop by a yeah. store for, like, 20 minutes, it throws off our schedule so much that when I come home, it's, like, a rush to get her some dinner, or you've already gotten her dinner, and I'm trying to give her a bath, and, like, then it's, like, straight to bed, yeah. and then I feel so depleted. Or you might just never see her. I mean, there yeah. have been times where I've gone to a store after work, and I'm like, can you pick up the baby from daycare so I can go to the store? I've come home from the store and she's already asleep, and then yeah. it's like, well, then I feel upset because like okay, well, I, didn't like, get to see I get her home today. around like five forty-five, and she goes to bed around seven thirty. Yeah, that's hard. That sucks. Anyway, there's... also, I mean, to kind of build off that too, another thing, it's like you give up your independence a little bit. Like there are places yeah. that we used to go that we can't go anymore. Yeah. Which it sounds selfish, but it's you get used to doing certain things and being able to do certain things. We did like road trips, like every weekend like yeah. we live in like the Indianapolis area so we go to Chicago and Cincinnati and Cleveland and Louisville and St. Louis even and now it's like a whole production to go to any of those places and if we are in one of those places for a certain reason we still can't do some of the things that we used to do like I love casinos, casinos. Yeah. I mean, we would go to casinos I'm a gambler, and just play a little so. bit um, Things like that where it's just be like, 
we could do that, but like we can't, literally can't take her in there. But there are other things, like we like to go shopping, obviously we can take her to that, but even then, the whole schedule has to go around her. And then you feel she bad because sometimes you keep her kind of trapped in a stroller and she wants to yeah. get out. And even if you're holding her, like she's growing, she wants to crawl around, she wants to walk around. She doesn't want to be confined, so you can't really give her that freedom in an environment like that. Anyway, um, what's been your happiest moment as a parent so far? I hate thinking about her in the hospital, but she was in the NICU for 18 days. And the day that we got to take her home. Oh, yeah. Because I was so worried. You don't know if she's going to get better, when she's going to get better. And she wasn't, not not better. Yeah. But I mean, when she's going to grow up enough, when they feel comfortable enough letting her out of constant care. And just the moment when I realized, like, she is going to go home, she is going to have a normal life, and we can kind of take it from here, not rely on people constantly checking on yeah. her that was my happiest moment I've talked a lot about Clara and her NICU experience like my pregnancy all that stuff on my blog so I'll link that below so you can read all about that but anyway how did you and Brittany meet we met on plenty of fish plenty of fish plenty of fish.com I do not recommend plenty of fish.com no. it is a Bunch disgusting of creeps on place there. It's really, like, a weird place. Oh, like, I didn't mean her a little bit, but mostly, like, some of the stories she told me from people that reached out to her who weren't me. A guy told me he wanted to shrink me down to mini miniature size, put me on a spoon, and swallow me so he could feel my throat contract around his whole body. You told them you weren't going to tell that story. No, it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> I, she I didn't get where I was I going. I didn't know. I was like, so. what? Yeah, it was really, really weird. But we, and then we met in person at Garfield, at Garfield Park, Park in, yeah, Indianapolis. in Indianapolis. Yeah. Yes. And then he proposed to me there. I did, next to a dumpster. Yes. Romantic. Such a beautiful scene. I wish he would have hired a photographer, <laughs> dumpster photographer. Anyway, there was one um, there. when did you know Britt was the one? The one. There. I've never asked you this question. I think you have. I think you just don't ever remember. Most things that I say. That's true. Yeah. Mm. Um, there are a lot of little moments that kind of hint towards it. And when we first started talking, we just talked like all night long. And then there was one night we had talked into the morning where I then had to get up and work. She had to go to work too. And I'm like, I literally cannot call off work. She called off work came over to where I was living, literally just laid in my bed all day while I worked, and just hung out, talked. She watched a lot of Sex in the City back then. But I'm like, she literally called off work to just hang out with me while I worked. Yeah. I'm like, that is something special and crazy, because it's like, I'm literally just sitting here on a computer working. There's not a ton of interacting I can do. I mean, a normal, because I mean, I'm working from home, so it's not as strict or anything. Yeah. But I'm like, there's definitely something here if, this is where, this is kind of where this is going. And that was pretty yeah, early. That was really early. It was probably less than a week after we met. But, like, we got married, like, we got engaged, like... A month after no. we met. No. Two months? Two months. Two months after Two we months met. Two months after we met. Yeah. Well, so, anyway. Things yeah, progressed yeah, quickly. Yeah, they did. So we, I think we kind of both knew earlier on than normal and um yeah that's kind of when I knew I'm like this is much different if she's taking an entire day to literally just sit there with me while I worked yeah yeah um do you want more kids I don't for sure not want more kids I don't not want more kids, but I don't want I more kids. would prefer not to have more than two kids if I can help it. I, like, I haven't closed the door on it or anything like that. Oh, he um, hasn't. But I am hesitant. Because I'm the boss. That's also true. She made us wear matching outfits. <laughs> no, I didn't. I was already wearing couch. this. I was already wearing this. I made him go buy this couch to match us. Oh, what is that? And then he put this sweatshirt on because he loves matching me. I just really like this sweatshirt. I thrifted this. Oh, cool. <laughs> um, what do you think of Brittany's budget ideas? 
I mean, I think they've worked. For the most part, there hasn't been a lot of resistance from me. Yeah. I'm kind of a sarcastic person in general, so things will come up and I'll be like, oh, I wish we could do this, but like really. I like, wish we could take those doors and go to the casino right now. We used to do that. Yeah, we did. <laughs> but um, I think we both kind of knew, like, we need to do something to change where our financial future is. Mm -hmm. And she was the one who stepped up, came up with a good plan. And I realized, like, we're both in this. This is something that is kind of both of our, I was going to say fault, but I guess it's more like responsibility. So she took the initiative to do the research and find something that she thought would work for us. I trusted her, and I think it's worked out really well. There are things that, you know, I would have liked to have tweaked a little bit differently, but they may or may not have worked. Who knows? I'm not a budget person, per se. It's just every once in a while, you know, it, it's not like we're the most strict budgeting people. We yeah. make exceptions and kind of roll with the punches, too. But I think it's worked really well, so I'm happy yeah. with it. Um... Is it hard to stick with Brit's budget? Oh, Brit's budget? It's That's what like it says. Our budget? That's what they said. Just yours? They call it mine. Um, not it's really. It's the pretty plus budget spreadsheet. That's true. But I don't think it's really hard to stick with it. Um, I think the thing sometimes that's... together we have a hard time sticking with like the restaurant budget. Yeah, because we're both kind of emotional eaters too. Yeah. So... Like, they have a hard day. We don't have any money left in the budget, but, well, we can, we can make it work. Yeah. Be like... Or just, we also, like, we go do a lot of things, and convenience, really. Yeah. We don't do it that much, like, throughout the week. Like, Monday through Thursday are yeah. the days that we have hard time. It's on the weekends when we're out and about. I would say three points of contention. Restaurants. Because we always want to eat when we can. Wendy's. Yeah. Four for four. True. Gas has been harder to stick to, mostly because I work from home. I don't use a lot of gas in my everyday transports. But I drive. Everyday transports, what does that even mean? Well, what are you transporting? Anyway, I, I don't, I'm not supposed to be using a lot of gas, really. But when I get the opportunity to, you know, if I want to go to thrift stores, if I want to go look for sneakers, if I want to go anywhere, generally requires a trip to Indy. It'd be easier if I didn't travel for work. So I travel, like... 30 minutes there, 30 minutes back, or more yeah. every day. And so if we both were only getting two tanks of gas a month, yeah. it'd be fine. But I'm getting, like, four to five tanks of gas. But then there are times, like, it's like, if I need to get a third tank of gas, I almost feel like, okay, I need to pay for this myself because I'm doing un what is unnece unnecessary travel, basically yeah. things that are just leisure for me as opposed to necessity for her. Um, and the third thing being being an allowance, which has been as low as twenty dollars a month. We've Most had than, well we've months, had months, months but, where we had no allowance. Yes. Yeah. But the thing that allows me to overcome that is I mean, we talked a little bit about thrifting and mostly before that, sneakers. So picking up hobbies, side hustles, things like that to generate my own source of income so I don't have to rely on family income. Yeah. So but, most people most budgeting couples, they'll pick up side hustles and they'll give their money to the budget. We don't do that. Yeah. Um, we just keep My separate. Pretty Plus money is separate and his, and like, I do some clothing reselling of my own clothes and stuff. Separate. And his, like, hustling money <laughs> is separate. And I think that's helped us to be able to, to just allow herself a little bit more and I feel like if I knew that all the money was going toward our budget there may be months where I'm really motivated to like help knock out a debt but there are probably going to be more months where I'm like well I can't do anything with the money anyway so I just have liked us keeping that separate and it's it's made it obviously slower to pay off the debt but I think it's kept us happier overall yeah I mean there are times too when we'll be like okay we want to go out to eat but we're over our restaurant budget. Yeah. So since we have our own separate money, we can yeah. be like, okay, we'll pay for ourselves. Yeah. And we did that tonight. Yep. Yeah, we did. Crappy mall Chinese. It was... Mm. It actually wasn't bad. We had a fun, yeah. We had a fun time. Like, we went to just to a mall. I had some returns. It was just easy. Yeah. Anyway. What's your favorite thing to help your wife with household-wise? 
you help my wife with? Help me with. Help you with. I'd say we share. Share. The household responsibilities. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So by that tone, I'm assuming that you think you do more. I do. I think currently you're probably right, but I think I used to do a lot more, and you're just more of like when people are coming over when we're hosting. Yeah. You're more of one of you. I'm the hostess order. with the most. And I'm just like, I don't care. They know I'm a slob. Yeah. Um, but you help, I think he helps a lot with laundry. I never, I, I mean, hardly ever touch the laundry. I would say laundry and vacuuming are probably the two. Yeah. But laundry the most. I don't mind doing the laundry. But I do all the cooking. That's most, true. I clean the kitchen. You sometimes help with dishes, but I, I clean the kitchen. Like Absolutely true. So, if there's any deep cleaning that needs done, I do it. Guilty. So, anyway. Um, do you think having a blogging wife is hard or cool? Both. Both? Why is it hard? Um, there are just times, I think, I don't even think it's necessarily blogging. I'm just more of an introvert at this point of my life. So the fact that you have a blog and you have kind of that blog community, you go out to events, you do other things, then a lot of times I'm just kind of chilling here. But even if you didn't have a blog and you were just a social person with a bunch of friends, it'd be the same situation. So I don't think really think it's the blog, I just think it's kind of where I am in my life. Yeah. That I'm just kind of here sometimes. I mean, I still only like like five people. But I do go to things am sometimes. Am I included in that? Five. Okay, I still I like six people. <laughs> just wanted to check and make sure. But, yeah, I mean, and there are just certain times where it's like, take pictures of me, and then I'll take pictures. And they suck. Yeah, and they'll be bad, and I'm not a great photographer, so. He's, like, he's a I great Instagram feel, husband. I feel like I put in, put in the effort, but I probably just don't get the payoff because just the end product doesn't turn out very well. But I am doing things like this, right? I mean, but, it's something. And you think it's cool. Why do you think it's cool? I just think it, I mean, it's almost like a form of art for you. It's artistic. It's creative outlet. Create. There you go. That is the perfect way to say it. I didn't overthink that one enough, apparently. But creative outlet is good. It's it's nice to have something like that. I don't really feel also, like I you have get that as much. Sometimes. That's Hotels, true. She'll get thirty-eight dollar glasses of wine. Yeah. Those random things. You get some perks. This is the last one. And it's kind of a, like the the most deep question we got, I think, is yeah. how do you work through hard marriage things together? I think I generally cut her off and disappear. Yeah, he does. Um, I am not super confrontational. and I am. Yeah. So she would much rather yeah. yell or have me yell. But I instead, guess. I'll just be like, okay. Okay. He says, okay. I'm like, I'm gonna. But sometimes, you. sometimes it's just okay, and she still has the same reaction. Oh no! Yeah, I but, get crazy. It's like when someone's like, calm down. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna calm down your face. Like, I can't. Ah, uh, yeah. I'm not confrontational, so I tend to take the path of least resistance. But then she gets more mad about it, and then I think eventually it just cools off, and we both have time to think about it. And it either just passes, or if it's something that still needs to be hammered out, we'll come back to it at a place where we're less emotionally charged. That's all the questions for Brett. Thank you for sticking around if you stuck around to the end, because I know this is a long video. My bad. It's okay. They, have. they wanted to know about you, so now they are going to And now they'll never want to see me again. <laughs> <laughs> now they're done with you. Um, done so. But if you enjoyed videos like this, be sure to come back tomorrow, because I'm doing... Vlogmas where I'm vlogging every single day. You can always find me um, at the Pretty Plus on Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook, and Twitter. As always on theprettyplus.com, and you can find Brett online too. You can follow me at Total Dad Thrift. I'm not super active on it. I'm not big on social media. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Guys. Thanks.